First, make sure they've been sitting down with their legs uncrossed for at least five minutes. It's best to do this right after taking their heart rate. Have them place their left arm on the table and palpate the brachial artery. You should be able to feel it just under the biceps, and you can mark it with an X if you want. Now place the blood pressure cuff on their arm, about 2 to 3 centimeters above the elbow. Ensure that the arrows on the cuff align with where you felt the brachial pulse. It should be snug enough to fit two fingers underneath. You can either attach the gauge to the cuff or place it beside you. Now place the stethoscope in your ears with the earpieces facing forward and position the head over the brachial artery. Here's a hint. If you hold the pressure bulb like this, it makes opening and closing the valve easy. Okay, let's do a quick review. The cuff is snug on the left arm, about 2 to 3 centimeters above the elbow. The stethoscope is placed over the brachial artery, and the earpieces are facing forward in her ears. The pressure gauge is clipped on the cuff, and the bulb is held properly in the right hand. Great, now rapidly inflate the cuff to 40 millimeters of mercury above where the beating stops, about 180 millimeters of mercury. Open the valve slowly and release the cuff pressure at a rate of about 2 millimeters of mercury per second. Now listen for the first sound of beating. This is called the first Kurok cough sound, and it identifies the systolic pressure. Keep letting air out at about 2 millimeters of mercury per second until the beating finally stops or is muffled. This is called the fourth Kurok cough sound, and it identifies diastolic pressure. Record these two numbers to the nearest 2 millimeters of mercury, the more accurate the better. If systolic is greater than 144, or if diastolic is greater than 94, wait an additional 5 minutes and repeat the process. If after that time it is still over, then you'll need a physician's approval to continue.